Have you started your tax return yet? On this episode of Aspire to Money, you'll learn the basics for your 1040 if you're an employee. This will help you be a better consumer when working with a tax professional. After educating yourself, you may even decide to do your own taxes. Please comment below on how you do your taxes. Keep in mind that you need to file Form 1040 by April 15, unless you live in Maine, Massachusetts, or District of Columbia, where local holidays give you one or two days of extra time. Filing can be done electronically by USPS and by IRS approved private delivery services. Whatever method you use, keep evidence that you got that return submitted before or on April 15th. Before we go through the 1040, find your W-2 that your employer should have provided to you. The W-2 lists your wages. The W-2 also lists the amount of federal and state income taxes that you have had taken out, called your withholding. You need this information to complete your 1040. Now let's go through the 1040 line by line. Starting with the 2018 tax year, there are no longer different flavors of 1040 forms. There is just one 1040 with different schedules for different situations. Anytime we want more information about a line on the 1040, we can go to irs.gov and look at the 1040 instructions. The first page of the 1040 has facts about you. The first line is your filing status. Are you single, married filing jointly, married filing separately, head of household, or qualifying widow or widower? Most of these are clear, but what does head of household mean in IRS lingo? Head of household is when you are unmarried and meet one of two tests. First, you paid over half the cost of a separate home for your dependent or Two, you paid over half the cost of a joint home for yourself and for your dependent for more than six months during the year. Filing status determines the part of the IRS tax table you will look at to figure out the amount of money you owe. Our example taxpayer, Susan, is single. The second line is your name and social security number. Tip, if you changed your name during the year, be sure to report the change to the Social Security Administration before filing your return. The third line is your standard deduction. You'll need to check one of the boxes if you fall into one of the special categories, such as being blind, over age 65, or your parent or someone else claims you as a dependent on their tax form. We'll talk more about the standard deduction when we get to the second page of the Form 1040. Please join the Aspire to Money mailing list for more great money advice. The first 10 people to sign up will receive a copy of the ebook, The Cats of Laughing Thunder Guide for Kids and Money. Back to the 1040. The fourth line is if you have a spouse and whether your spouse falls into one of the special categories. The fourth line also has a box to check if you had health insurance for the year or were exempt. If you don't fall into one of those categories, you may owe a penalty for 2018. Beginning in the 2019 tax year, there will no longer be a penalty. Susan had health insurance, so we'll check the box. This line is your home address. It also contains a box if you wish to donate to the presidential election campaign public funding. $3 for you and $3 for your spouse if applicable. You do not have to donate. If you do check the box, this $3 won't change your tax owed or your refund due. The following lines are for you to list information about your dependents, if any. For children, you should check the child tax credit box. In general, to be your dependent, you must have provided over half the support for that person. Divorce may result in complicated considerations as to which parent can claim a child. You should make sure to seek professional advice for your specific situation. Divorce decrees may specify who can claim the child. However, there are special IRS rules that may override the language in the decree. Next up is a signature line with the date and your occupation. Same for your spouse, if applicable. Only use the paid preparer box if you hired someone to do your taxes for you. The paid preparer must sign as well. Please watch the next episode where we cover the second page of the 1040. Thanks for watching and please subscribe to the Aspire to Money channel.